Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. I have a fun and practical project for you today, the slice rug. This was so much fun to make and I am just loving using this in my own home. Right in front of my sink when I'm doing the dishes, I want that slice rug. It fits perfect in that space by the back door, going from the house to the garage. So many applications for this rug and I can't wait to show you how fun and easy it is to make. Let's start off with what you'll need to make a rug for yourself or maybe for a housewarming gift for a friend. These are absolutely addicting. I have a feeling you're gonna to wanna to make more than one. You'll be needing one jelly roll, one roll of the two and a half inch by 25 yard roll of the Bozal Organic Cotton. I love this product makes it so easy. You could use batting strips, but I love that that 25 yards is in one continuous strip. I want to show you what was left over when we made the rug. This is how much was left over. So we really were very economical with how we used it and it only takes one, uh, one roll to do it. Of course, you'll want a spool of coordinating thread. Um, sometimes you want to just analyze what your project would look like and visualize what would work best with all the fabrics in that particular set? We chose a light blue for the English countryside, which is what's featured behind me by Maywood Studio. And we also encourage you to get a box of the Wonder Clips. Uh, it just seems to work a lot better than pins, and I love how it just holds a lot of it all together. So when I take it to the sewing machine, uh, everything is kind of compact and intact. So when I'm sewing everything together, nothing's shifting or moving, and I'm not poking myself. You'll definitely need the diagram for this particular project. That's a free download, but we'll also have a paid pattern where you're not having to download 10 pages, tape it all together, cut stuff apart later on. So this is an option for you. If you are planning to make multiple rugs, I would think the investment in the paid pattern where this is all one size for you and you're not taping pages together would probably be a worthwhile investment. But if you wanna just try it out first, download 10 pages, tape them all together. We've numbered it so that it's very easy to follow. And what do these numbers mean? Let me just walk you through the process and then we're gonna jump right into how to make these rugs. It's so much fun and again, super practical. They wash well too. So if they get dirty, just throw them in the washing machine and dryer and they'll just get better and better with each washing. So as I mentioned, 29 strips, or if I didn't mention, 29 strips are being used, 40 are on a jelly roll. Put the other 11 aside that you decide to not use and you'll be able to save that for a future project. So you have 29 basic rows and each one has a measurement associated with that. What that's letting you know is from your strip that's already cut to 42 to 43 inches, depending on the length of your jelly roll strips, you'll be cutting your strips down for rows one through 10, those will all be cut to 33 inches. For rows 11, 12, and 13, that's guiding you to cut those strips to 32 inches and so on and so forth. That's why you'll need to go ahead and lay out your strips in the arrangement that you prefer all one to 29 ahead of time so you know what size to cut each row to. Now I've went ahead and cut, this is my first and second rows, I went ahead and cut those to 33 inches ahead of time. So let's put the diagram aside for now. We'll definitely be using it later. And we're going to bring out the Katahdin and our Wonder Clips and we'll show you how to prepare this to take to the sewing machine and get your process of your rug going. So let's put that over here and we'll get out this Katahdin. I love that it's just a convenience item. It's ready to go. I'm not having to cut batting strips. You can imagine that's a lot of space to try to cut batting yourself. It's definitely doable. You might be using some batting tape. I just think those types of items, just like a jelly roll, is a convenience item. I could certainly cut my own two and a half by width of fabric strips myself, but I love the convenience of just being able to jump into the project. I have two strips just to start with. You would have, of course, all 29. You'll turn those right sides down. Now, before you pick them up off of your arrangement of the 29, you'll lay them out. I encourage you to go ahead and take a picture of that layout because once you lay them, 
rungs are wrong side up and start putting the katahdin on the back, taking them to the sewing machine and bringing them back, they might get mixed up. So it's nice to have a picture to refer back to. We will later on be actually numbering our strips, but right now we're not doing that step quite yet. So with our katahdin, I'm just gonna unroll a certain distance of that. You'll lay that directly on the back side of your strip all the way through where your white, uh, onto your white selvage. Now one other thing I want to mention to you, actually I'm going to go ahead and clip this, folding it in half, folding it in the middle, and I'm going to clip this. Notice how I have a wider white selvage here. This clip has a flat end on the bottom and a round end on the top. I'm going to be sewing on that double opening right here. I want that flat side to be on the very bottom and the colored side to be on the top. Be consistent about that. One other thing I want to point out to you is notice there's a wider white portion here. I'm going to show you one of my uncut strips. If you have not noticed this, and you maybe you already have, on jelly roll strips, there's a wider white selvage and there's a side that has basically almost nothing that's white. Keep the side that's the wider white on the left side. Later on, we're gonna go mark our strips and we can see our markings better on the strip that has the white than on the strip that doesn't have anything. So that's, that's just another pointer that we learned along the way. We're gonna to continue to fold like this with our uh, batting on the back, again with our wonder clip, the flat side is on the bottom, the colored side's at the top, and I'm clipping on the side that has the single roll, and this is the double side, and I'm taking as big of a bite of that as possible, so I'm holding as much of that together as I can. Now I would continue clipping, of course, this entire strip, but I wanna show you when we get done with this strip and we start to clip the next, you'll simply, let me move this out of the way, You'd have this all the way clipped, and you're just gonna butt up the next strip right next to it. I'm not going to be cutting my katahdin to the 33 inches and the 32 inches and so on, forth, so on and so forth. I'll just keep that going and just, as if it was one continuous thing, just continue to wonder clip all the way down. Now, when you run out of wonder clips, that's when it's just time to go sew. And of course, you wouldn't have all 29. You don't have enough clips for that. Once you get done with your clips, there's no more left, you'll go sew, unclip, and then you'll come back and you'll continue to clip until you have all 29 of your things sewn together. But let's go, I'm off camera, keep clipping all the way down. When I come back, we'll be over at the sewing machine. I already have the denim needle in my sewing machine. I've increased my stitch length to 2.75, and I'll be sewing just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'll clip that, and when I come back, we'll go sew our first two strips together. I'm now at my sewing machine. I have a 2.75 inch length. I'm on a Bernina 770 Quilters Edition today. I'm sewing just a little bit greater than a quarter inch seam allowance, and I've got my Wonder Clip box to my left. As I remove the clips, I'll just be putting them into the box. So let's get started. I have to move that first clip to get going. There we go. I want to make sure that those two stay stacked on top of each other and one doesn't roll away. So you might want to just put your finger here so that puts a pressure so that it doesn't roll away. So I have my first two strips together, and I'm just gonna cut those apart because if that's my row and my row one and row two, and we're gonna say for our purposes that it is, again, I wanna point out that you know, you're gonna sew all of these together, cut them all apart, you've got your 29 strips, you're gonna be laying those out in the diagram. But then you begin to sew them together in groups of two. You want to make sure that there's the, there's the single roll and there's the double fold, I would call it. All of those are going to have the single roll to the top. So if this is row one and this is row two, of course, we would be bringing those back to our diagram, laying everything out, and we would number everything. I'm going to actually show you a section of this quilt 
of where we're going to go. So this might make a little more sense. This is the first upper portion. Those first 10 rows that were all cut to 33 inches, we're going to sew those together as a unit. And look how, just look how we went ahead and numbered everything. So you could do that now if you wanted to do that now, which I would encourage you to do, because now you want to make sure you're actually putting the correct rows together in the correct sequence. You've got the single roll to the top. Because this double opening, let's just show you how this is going to work. This is row one, this is row two, the, sing the single rolls at the top. That double opening, this single roll is just going to nest right into that. Yep, just like this. Now, I want to make sure though that notice how the left side is lined up. I actually want to line up the left side first. In order for us to not have this too, what I call a cattywampus on this end, you want to really line these up so they're pretty much in a straight row. So start here. And now I want to point this out. We did not cut that. That's just where it landed. That's just how these strips end up being in real life. You can line this up as best you can, and whatever this ends up being is what it ends up being. So let's just roll this in together, just like this. We're going to take this to the sewing machine, and I am going to keep these two ends together because I want that white selvage and that line right there to line up. Now I'm going to increase my, uh, I'm going to keep it at 2.75 stitch length. My width will be 5.5, maybe even up to 6.5. And we're going to sew these together. Of course, with that zigzag, you're just hopping left and right. Your visual point will be right that gap. And we're just going to be feeding that nice single roll into that double roll and tucking it right in there. And it's just going to gather itself up and tuck in and lay nice and flat on the rug. So let's go to the sewing machine right now and we're going to do that. So my machine is set up for the straight stitch. I'm going to increase that to, I'm going to go with 5.5. I'm going to even go with 6 today. I want to make sure that that zigzag is grabbing both of those readily. Now on this particular presser foot, I've got a 20C on there, Bernina. There's a line right here. I don't know if you can see that. That's really where I'm looking throughout this process so that I'm going right down the middle of this and I'll let the needle hop back and forth left to right to join the strips together. So let's get started. So I've sewed those together and I went ahead and pulled out my diagram because I'm going to keep referring to that. Those first two strips are there and laid down, and then I would sew strips three and four together, five and six, seven and eight, nine, ten, and I'd be putting them back on my diagram. I would encourage you to just work with the first ten, ten rows initially, sewing in pairs, and then once you have one and two together and three to four, go ahead and sew those together, and then maybe five, six, seven and eight, nine and ten, and then you're going to join that together as a group. Let me show you that. I brought it out just a little bit briefly before. And I like to sew things in sections. It helps alleviate distortion. One other thing that you may find helpful is once you have a bit of a section together, maybe two strips or four strips, go ahead and take that to your pressing mat with some good steam. And just I would just encourage you to go ahead and steam as you go. It's just going to keep everything nice and flat so that your rug doesn't have any kind of bubbles or arcs to it. We found that steaming that, you might even want to consider sizing if you need to. It's just going to help everything lie real flat in the very end. Don't be afraid to use plenty of steam and sizing as necessary. Notice the next section after this is sections 11, 12, and 13. Go ahead and sew those to get together. We did that ahead of time as well. Let me just see which ones those are. I believe this is what's next. Yes. Do you see that stagger right here? And let me show you on the diagram. 
it's it's a definite step so you've got your first 10 rows sewn together and you've got your next three what this would mean when you take this to the sewing machine is you're just going to hold this in place you might want to pinch that between your fingers uh, and go ahead and take that to the sewing machine and now you're going to sew that so you've got that step and the same would be true for our next row which i believe is our blue laying that out see how numbering these is so helpful because the numbers that you wrote down there we just used a permanent uh, marker it's going to all be cut away so don't worry about writing with a permanent marker you want it to be nice and bold so you can see it don't use a friction pen because as you steam it and iron it those I, those markings will be ironed away same thing there's that stagger and you might even want to just do this as a section and then sew that onto the bigger portion Basically, you kind of have an upper portion, kind of your middle portion, and then down as we bring these, I'm gonna lay these all out for you. Again, just referring to our rug behind us. Oh, I don't need to even look, they're numbered. Hey, I don't need to do that. Keep turning around. I have everything I need right in front of me. So I have everything laid out. I will now go, just as I mentioned, in strips just two at a time, sewing the units together, sewing into larger units, and then ultimately sewing everything together until it's one large piece. And then when I come back, we'll talk to you about how to cut out your diagram, place it onto your pieced unit, and we'll be able to finish up the rug. I have all the pieces put together and I have it as one unit and I put it back onto our diagram just to make sure that everything is correct. If you find something got just a little bit, again, cattywampus, it's no problem. Go ahead and seam rip whatever rows you need to and adjust as necessary. You do want to take a quick look at that and I feel satisfied. Even if some of my numbers, I'm going to bring this down so you can see that. Remember how I mentioned we did our best to, to start our strips all at the same place, but where they end is kind of where they end. I want to show you something down here toward the end. This is the real life situation with this particular project. Or notice how my strips didn't go quite as long. I think sometimes when I sew the rows together, they kind of bring it all in just a little bit tighter. This is one of the reasons we gave you ample room before and after the actual frame of the rug. So you're still good. Don't worry about that if your strips come in just a little bit shorter. The main thing is that they're beyond the solid line. Speaking of the solid line, I'm just gonna put the rug aside for the moment. This is when you will go ahead, if you are using the downloadable pattern, and you're going to cut out on that solid line. If you're using the purchase pattern, that will be a separate, uh, separate piece for you. It's going to come on a large rectangle as one unit, and you'll need to cut out that. But it, again, it'll be completely separate from this, and that way you'll be able to use it again and again. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out, and we'll get going on finishing up our rug. My template's cut out, and I'm placing it on top. I've got my numbers off to the left. I'm placing that on top. The goal, of course, is that this is going to fit within the framework of our pieced slice rug at this point. If you find there's distortion at the top, maybe this is having an arc or it's concave, steam it, uh, use some sizing, push it around. Don't be afraid to get in there and get it where you need to be. That's why we're going to be using plenty of steam. Um, as necessary to push the fabric where we need it to be. Once you're satisfied of where that should be, we're gonna just bring our pattern to the very top and we're gonna clip that pattern. Again, with our flat side to the bottom so it's nice and smooth against our cutting mat or our table or wherever you're having to make your, or getting to make your rug. down. I'll be using a friction pen. I would encourage you to not use your permanent marker at this point, but rather a friction pen. 
What I like about that friction pen, I've got a little bit of bow in here. I mean, let me get that out of there. I don't like that bow. There we go. What I like about the friction pen is if you draw a line somewhere you don't want it to be, you can just steam it away. You can iron it away. You don't even have to steam it. Now on this darker section, I'm not going to be able to see my black friction pen. You'll see how I'll manage that part. I'm going to turn this around so it's a little more natural from where I am. And I'm just going to begin to draw right along that line. And I'm just holding that pattern down so that my pen doesn't dive underneath that. Now right up in that darker blue, I'm not going to be able to see anything there with my friction pen. And I'll show you how we're going to manage that. Now, let me just take a quick peek. I think I can see everything real well. I might even try to get into that. But here's what we're going to do. That area where we can't really see, because the black is not going to show up on that dark blue, or maybe you're even going to be using a black fabric, I will leave my pattern in place and simply begin to cut here. I'm going to do the same over on this side. Once that's done, I'm going to remove this because I don't want to accidentally cut into that in case you want to use it again. So let's get that out of the way. Now the scissors that I'm using are the Bordeaux scissors. These scissors are meant for a mission just like this. This is made from clover. They're made in Japan. They're incredible scissors, the Bordeaux 200s. They are meant to go through this kind of bulk with ease. I love them when I use them on um, projects like this, projects like wool, anything thicker. They just go through there, they don't even hesitate. Okay, there's our rug. Wow. <laughs> so, our final step will be binding. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're using 29 strips for the rug. You're going to need two of those strips to be binding. Now, one thing you might want to plan up front, if you want your binding strips to be the same fabric and you have a jelly roll that has two of the same fabric and there's duplicates in this particular English countryside, you might want to put those aside in the very beginning. Decide what your binding is and put them aside so you don't accidentally use those in the project. If you're using a jelly roll that has 40 unique strips in there, again, plan out two that you think would look good together. It's going to take two strips to do the binding around this uh, distance. And then just put those aside. And you'll piece those into one unit, which we've done ahead of time. And I'll show you how to put the binding strips on. Just as you would suspect, you're going to fold those wrong sides together. I'm going to start up here on this side, and again, this is where my Wonder Clips come in so handy, why the Wonder Clips are just really an integral part of the project. I'm going to leave about a one inch, maybe a nice healthy one inch uh, kind of tail up here, which we will later fold around. But I'm going to start there, and I'm just going to clip. Now, this is not cut on bias, but you do have a gentle arc here. We have found this is not a problem to be using a width of fabric cut around this gentle curve. Typically, when we're trying to bind something that has a curve, we're going to use a bias binding. We found this was not a problem, but if you're cutting your own strips from home, you might want to consider doing your strips for your binding to be on the bias. It'll just make things even just a little bit easier for you because it'll have that natural stretch that only bias has. And I'm going to continue clipping all the way around. Oh, clipping every three, four inches as necessary. So I will keep clipping this. 
and then we will be I'll be at the sewing machine and I will show you how to stitch this down. I'm at the sewing machine now. Now if your machine was just sewing all the rows together like mine was, make sure you switch back to a straight stitch. Once we do put the binding on and secure it, later we'll be going back to that same wider zigzag stitch, but for now make sure it's a straight stitch. I've got my one inch flap up here. So you're going to start sewing right where you can kind of feel the rug is. And let's get started. So we have our binding on and now I want to show you how to deal with this little part that's kind of up here. How do we secure that? Of course, we don't need binding across the top. We have our single ruled edge here. This is something I want you to definitely see. So we're going to get a little bit of a close up of that. So you definitely see this step. So you'll lift this over to the side. And of course, normally you roll that to the back and you will. But first, let's just fold that down. And then we'll tuck this to the back and we'll clip. Make sure your flat sides to the bottom and you'll continue clipping around with your wonders clips all the way around. I'll continue clipping. When we come back to the sewing machine, I'll have my machine set up for a 5.5 inch stitch length. I'm going to zigzag this close. I want to make sure I secure and catch everything that's back there. This machine, this rug's going to be used again and again and again. So I'll keep clipping and you, we're so close to being done with our rug. I'll clip it all the way around. I'm going to get the machine set up for the 5.5 inch width and we are so close. So I'll be at the sewing machine in just a moment. All right, I've set my machine up for my zigzag again. We're ready to get started. Definitely want to back stitch here. My binding is now on my rug and notice there's just a little bit of a bubble. That is very normal. This is where the steam comes in. And as Tammy says, we're going to be the boss of our fabric. We're going to make it be where we want it to be. If you find your binding is arcing up, just steam your rug. It's going to do wonders. Magic sizing. Just a little bit of steam will help our rug be as flat as we want it to be. And it's so perfectly practical to use. Look at that. Already done. How quick and how easy that is. I'm so glad you let me show you how to make the slice rug today using the Jelly Roll and the Katahdin. I hope you enjoyed learning that. If you want to learn about more of our projects, be the first to know. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.